After discovering my wife pretended to be poor. Chapter 1. Both my wife and I were poor. She became disabled to save me. I worked hard to support her. Taking on three jobs until I suffered from a bleeding stomach. But I never expected that she pretended to be disabled to deceive me. She wasn't poor at all. She was the only daughter of the richest man in Haiching and could casually transfer four million to her unforgettable first love. To save money to treat my wife's leg injury, I attended a party as a waiter one night. When my legs were numb from standing, I saw a familiar figure. I suddenly froze in place. The woman surrounded in the middle was wearing an elegant dress, with a delicate and beautiful face, exuding an air of nobility. I thought it was an illusion and stared for a while. It wasn't an illusion. It was my wife, Nami. What was she doing here? I had just heard others say that everyone attending this party tonight was a well-known big shot in the business world. People of distinguished status. But Nami was penniless. How could she be someone of distinguished status? The next second, I saw her lift her leg and walk toward the sofa. My body trembled. Her leg wasn't disabled. I remembered last night when I held her in bed and said, Wife, I want to earn a lot of money, and then take you to a big hospital to treat your leg. She gently kissed my face. No need. I don't want you to be too tired. Pausing. She showed a guilty and frustrated expression. I'm sorry, husband. If my leg weren't disabled, you wouldn't have to work so hard to support the family. Thinking about this, my throat felt like it was being strangled by a giant hand, making it hard to breathe. Wearing a mask and a uniform, and with many people around, Nami didn't notice me. To uncover the truth, I shuffled my feet to the back of the sofa and eavesdropped on their conversation. A woman with glasses asked Nami, I thought you weren't coming tonight. Nami lazily replied, Staying in that shabby place of a few dozen square meters every day is stifling me. The woman with glasses laughed a few times. I see you've been playing for so long and still haven't come back. You must have really fallen for someone like Ryu, haven't you? Nami sneered. Like him. Who are you insulting? He's just like a stray animal by the roadside. Something to play with when bored. Not worthy of anything serious. I hired someone to put on a show and told him my leg was disabled. And he believed it. He works day and night. Thinking about saving money to treat my leg. Isn't that funny? After speaking, they laughed heartily. At that moment, my heart felt like it was being slashed by a knife. Bleeding profusely, I couldn't believe that the woman who slept beside me every night would say such things. I thought she loved me, but it turned out she didn't even like me. She just treated me like a toy to play with. She deceived me. The woman with glasses laughed and said, That's right. If Yuki hadn't fallen for another woman, you wouldn't have deliberately found someone like Ryu to provoke him. I heard that Yuki went crazy when he found out you got married and already broke up with his girlfriend. He might come to reconcile with you later. Nami responded with a hum. As long as he comes back to me. I'll divorce and be with him immediately. The woman with glasses asked. How are you going to get rid of Ryu then? Nami squinted and said. I can't let him know my true identity. Or it will be hard to get rid of him. And his awful mother. Her greedy face makes me sick. If she knew I was rich. She would come to my doorstep every day for money. Just thinking about it is disgusting. My heart tightened heavily. So she was the only daughter of the richest man in Haiching. Incredibly wealthy. Not a poor girl abandoned by her parents. As for my mom. When she first found out I was going to marry Nami. She strongly opposed it, later agreeing only if we gave her 20,000 yuan, but Nami said she didn't have the money. Knowing my mom's character, she wouldn't give up without getting the money, so I gritted my teeth and took out my previous savings to give her the 20,000. The woman with glasses laughed playfully. So, who do you think is better in bed, Ryu or Yuki? Chapter 2 Nami's voice carried a tone of contempt. He doesn't deserve to be compared with Yuki. My face turned extremely pale. Every word Nami uttered felt like a knife twisting in my heart. If she had even a shred of respect for me, she wouldn't discuss such a topic with another woman, humiliating me like this. I wanted to throw a drink in her face and ask why she treated me this way, but I didn't. I was powerless and had no status. If she decided to deal with me, I wouldn't stand a chance against her. At that moment, I just wanted to escape from there. Maybe I was too flustered. When I turned around, I accidentally bumped into someone. I heard the sound of a glass shattering on the ground. Just as I was about to apologize, I was slapped and a man's angry voice sounded above me. You blind fool. How dare you bump into me? I was stunned by the slap, and it took me several seconds to lower my head and apologize. I'm sorry. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw Nami walking over, and my heart jumped into my throat, afraid she would recognize me. She walked straight to the men who slapped me and asked softly, Yuki, are you hurt? My body stiffened. He was Yuki, Nami's unforgettable first love. His features were handsome and well-defined, wearing an elegant suit clearly a rich young master. I quickly lowered my head further. Because of frequent overtime, my face had become very haggard. And to save money, I hadn't had a proper meal in a long time. Nami glanced at me with displeasure. Why don't you hurry up and leave? 
I clenched my palms tightly, trying not to cry, and left with difficulty, I walked slowly, and behind me, I heard Yuki say to Nami, Nami, I recently lost over 3 million in the stock market, my parents will definitely scold me when they find out, can you transfer me some money? Nami immediately took out her phone, I've transferred 4 million to you, if it's not enough, let me know. I stopped in my tracks and mechanically turned my head to take a look. Yuki hugged Nami happily and kissed her face several times. Thank you, Nami. I knew you were the best to me. I clutched my heart, which felt like it was about to break. I remembered when we first got married. I had appendicitis and needed surgery but couldn't afford the surgical fee. Nami helplessly held me and cried. Husband, I'm so useless. I can't even afford your surgical fee. What should we do? Seeing her crying, I remembered how she saved me and comforted her, saying I would find a way. Later. I borrowed money from friends to have the surgery. She wasn't willing to give me a few thousand for my surgery. Yet now she casually transferred four million to her unforgettable first love. The stark contrast made my heart feel like it was being cut by a knife. I dragged myself out of the hotel. I walked like a zombie on the street. Suddenly, I tripped over something and fell to the ground. Seeing my bleeding knees and palms, it felt like the last straw that broke the camel's back. And I finally let my tears flow. I recalled our past memories. Nami was my neighbor a year ago. She was kicked out by the landlord for not paying rent and slept in the stairwell. When I walked by, she grabbed my pant leg and said she had a fever, asking if I could let her stay for the night. I shook off her hand and kept walking. But suddenly, I stopped and turned back to look at her. It was very cold. And she was shivering. I remembered my own lonely and helpless past. So I took her in. I initially planned to let her go once her fever broke. But several days passed. And she didn't recover. She cooked and cleaned for me every day, showing me care and concern. One night. She waited for me after work at the corner and was harassed by a drunk. I stopped him just in time, but he picked up a stick to hit me. At that critical moment, Nami stepped in front of me and saved me, becoming disabled in the process. I grew up in a single-parent family, and my mother only scolded me, demanding that I earn more money for her. I had always lacked love. No one had ever protected me like she did. After that, we got together. Soon, I proposed to her, longing for a warm family. Nami's leg was disabled, so she couldn't work and the entire family burden fell on me. I worked hard, not only to support the family but also hoping to take her to a big hospital to treat her leg, so she could walk normally. It turned out everything was just a joke. What I thought was a deep, unforgettable love was just a meticulously planned game by her. Returning home, I looked at the various household items on the table, all discounted items I had fought for at the supermarket yesterday. I had been so happy sharing with Nami how cheap they were, saving us dozens of yuan. She kept praising me, now thinking back. She was probably laughing at me for being a fool in her heart. I took a shower, and the water on my knees and palms hurt like needles, but I didn't care. I wanted to remember this pain. I packed Nami's things in a box and left it at the door. Just as I stood up, my phone rang. Chapter 3. I took out my phone and saw the contact name, Wife. Now, looking at that title, I felt my eyes welling up. When I answered, I heard Nami ask, Honey, when will you be back? I'm not very smart. But even I could see the purpose of her call. She was trying to test if I would be home tonight. If I wasn't, she could be with Yuki. My mind was in a mess, and I didn't want to see her for the time being. Closing my eyes, I said, I'm on the night shift tonight. I won't be back. During the day, I work at a company. In the evening I work as a security guard in the neighborhood. And in between, I deliver food. Tonight, I was called to help at the party last minute as a waiter. It was just another part-time job. So I went. On the other end, Nami seemed relieved. Then remember to drink plenty of water, and rest if you get tired. Hearing her fake concern, I couldn't help but hang up the call. If she really cared about me, how could she bear to let me work three jobs a day, exhausting myself like a dog? I sat on the narrow sofa, unable to sleep all night. At dawn, I heard the sound of the key turning and got up to walk over. The door opened, and I saw Nami standing outside. When she saw me, there was a flash of surprise in her eyes, because I usually go straight to the company after the night shift and wouldn't be home at this time, but she was a good actress, limping a step forward and calling me husband, Nami was wearing a t-shirt, jeans, and sneakers I bought for her from an online discount store, each item cost no more than 20 yuan, at the party, I couldn't understand why she pretended to be disabled, now I know she wanted to touch me this way and use her disability as an excuse not to work, two birds with one stone, at that time, I was truly touched, thinking I was lucky to meet such a good woman, and swore to be good to her for life, Nami smiled and asked, Honey, why are you standing at the door? Were you waiting for me? I looked at her quietly. If I hadn't gone to the party last night and found out the truth, I would have rushed up to hug her and call her wife. I would work day and night for her, even if it meant bleeding stomach ulcers, eating instant noodles at work, 
and pretending to diet when colleagues asked. Then, one day, when she had enough fun, she would kick me away. How could she treat me so heartlessly? Thinking of this, my tears flowed. I pointed to the box at my feet. I've packed your things. They're in this box. Nami panicked when she saw me crying and reached out to hug me. I instantly remembered Yuki holding her. Her gentle and sweet expression. She usually treated me the same way, but with me, it was fake. And with Yuki, it was genuine. I reflexively stepped back. Don't touch me. Nami looked at me helplessly. Honey, why are you crying? Are you mad because I wasn't home when you got back? Her eyes turned red, looking genuinely worried. I'm sorry, it's my fault. I just went out to look for a job because I felt so sorry seeing you work so hard every day. I didn't mean to worry you. Please don't be mad at me. I promise I won't do it again. Please don't leave me. Okay. Looking at her pitiful face, I wiped my tears away. Do you really feel sorry for me? Do you really consider me your husband? Nami sighed helplessly. Honey, what are you talking about? Of course, I care about you. Yes, I'm a big fool. Looking at her face, all I could think of was her saying that liking me was an insult and how she said I wasn't worthy of being compared to Yuki. Her disdainful expression, like I was trash. I suppressed the pain and handed her the documents. These are divorce papers. Sign them. Nami was stunned for a moment, looking at the divorce papers in my hand, still with an innocent look. Honey, what do you mean by this? I looked at her with red eyes and said sarcastically, Miss Jiang, you're noble and wealthy. Do you have difficulty understanding the word divorce? Chapter 4 Nami continued to play dumb. Honey, what do you mean by Miss Jiang? I don't understand. I couldn't comprehend why she kept pretending even at this point. Did she think I was easy to fool? A surge of anger ignited within me, and I pointed to the bruise on my face. The waiter at the party last night was me. Then I took her water glass from the box and smashed it against her right leg, shouting hoarsely, Your leg isn't even crippled. You liar. How long did you plan to deceive me? Nami, you don't have to worry about getting rid of me. Now I'm the one leaving you. The glass shattered on the floor. Nami froze for a moment. Then, after a few seconds of silence, adopted a haughty demeanor. I didn't expect you to find out my identity so quickly. It saves me from making more excuses. She took out a bank card and handed it to me. There's 200,000 yuan in this card. I didn't take it. No need. The divorce agreement is clear. I've kept track of every expense since we got married. Just give me half back. Don't worry. I won't ask for a penny more. Being poor. I had a habit of keeping accounts. Nami looked at me in disbelief. You don't want this card. She couldn't believe someone as money-loving as me would refuse 200,000 yuan. But she didn't know I had worked tirelessly just to treat her leg injury. Nami. A man's voice suddenly came from behind. I looked over. It was Yuki. He came over and put his arm around Nami's waist. His eyes full of disdain as he looked at me. I'm warning you. Divorce quickly. Don't think you can continue to pester Nami. She's not someone a man like you can covet. I looked at him expressionlessly and said coldly. Divorce is between me and Nami. You don't get to warn me. Yuki. Embarrassed and angry. Raised his hand to slap me again. But this time I grabbed his wrist to stop him. Enough. Nami glared at me. Try touching him. Yuki shook off my hand. A taunting smile playing on his lips. My eyes were bloodshot. My heart numb from the pain. And I pressed my lips together. Saying. If you love him so much. Why don't you hurry up and get the divorce procedures done? Nami looked at me. Fine. Let's get divorced. Half an hour later. We arrived at the registration office. There weren't many people at this hour. So it was soon our turn. I remembered how quickly we got our marriage certificate too. The difference was, back then, I was overjoyed. And now, I was dead inside. After I signed my name, it was Nami's turn. But she didn't move. She turned to me and asked, Ryu, I'll ask you one more time. Are you sure you want to divorce me? Are you sure you won't regret it? I forced a smile. Nami, marrying you is the thing I regret most. Nami's face darkened immediately. She picked up the pen and signed. With the divorce certificate in hand. I didn't look at her again and walked away without turning back. Back home. I saw her things at the door. She hadn't taken them. I wasn't surprised. They were probably trashed to her. I took them to the garbage bin and threw them away. Just like I was throwing Nami away. I slept for a long time. Waking up to find it was already dark. Not wanting to cook. I called my friend Ken to go out for dinner. I told Ken about Nami pretending to be poor and crippled to deceive me. He was furious. That Nami is too much. You shouldn't let her off easily. You should take half of her assets. She gave me 200,000 yuan. I didn't take it. You idiot. You didn't take the 200,000. Chapter 5. I took a sip of beer. Before. She wouldn't even give me a few thousand for surgery. And now she suddenly offers me 200,000. Who knows what trap she's setting for me. Ken thought I made sense. That's true. But still. It makes me so mad. I better not see her. Or I'll curse her out. I was really upset. So I drank a lot. In the end. Ken had to take me home. The next day. 
I pulled myself together and went to work. A woman like Nami wasn't worth my time. I should look ahead. Without Nami, my life was calm and peaceful. I quit my part-time security job and used my time to improve myself, preparing to get another certification. I didn't deliberately follow Nami's news, but one day, I saw Nami and Yuki on the street, holding hands and shopping like a couple. Seeing this scene, I felt nothing. Maybe it was because I no longer loved Nami. That evening, while I was studying, I got a call from Ken, Ryu. Come to our hotel quickly. Ken worked at a hotel. I asked, what happened? Don't ask, just come over. There's something interesting to see. When I arrived, I saw a crowd at the hotel entrance. Some people had cameras and were taking pictures, probably reporters. I didn't see Ken, but I did see Nami. She looked furious, and I was startled by her expression. She stormed out of the hotel lobby, got into a car, and left. Ken came over, laughing heartily. You're late. You missed quite the show. It turned out Yuki had brought a female model to the hotel tonight. Nami caught them and beat up the model. To help me, Ken had informed the reporters and posted it online. Now everyone knew Nami had been cheated on. I gave Ken a thumbs up. He was truly my good brother. Nami had deceived me. And now she was deceived by Yuki. It was her karma. The next evening, I came home from work and unexpectedly saw Nami at my door. She was holding a bag of peanuts I liked. She smiled at me. Ryu, these are your favorite peanuts. Have some. I said indifferently. I don't like them anymore. Nami's hand froze in midair. After a while, she said, let's get back together. Ryu, I'll make sure you have a good life. We'll have servants at home. A driver when you go out. You won't have to work. I'll buy you whatever you want. This apartment. Return it tomorrow. Come live with me. I looked at Nami. When she said this, it didn't sound like a request. It sounded like she was granting me a favor. Did she think I was something she could summon and dismiss at will? I'm a person, not a dog. Nami, get out. Hearing me tell her to leave, Nami's expression changed instantly. Ryu, I've lowered myself to coax you. What more do you want me to do? I laughed out of anger. She thought that her noble status meant I should be grateful and cling to her. Not being pretentious. Nami, listen carefully. I don't love you anymore. No matter what you do, I will never get back with you. Nami dropped the peanuts and grabbed my arm. Her expression turning frightening. What did you say? I looked into her eyes and said, word by word, I don't love you anymore. Chapter 6. Nami seemed to be triggered, her pupils slightly shrinking, taking advantage of her momentary distraction. I pried her fingers off and quickly opened the door to go inside, but Nami didn't give up. She went to my mom to persuade me, you must remarry Nami immediately. She is the only daughter of the richest men in Haichin. With her, we will have endless money. My mom never showed me motherly love. If my grades were poor, she would scold and hit me. She just saw me as a tool to make money. I won't remarry her. If you keep pushing me, don't blame me for cutting ties with you. After saying that, I hung up the phone, worried that Nami might continue to harass me. I discussed with Ken about finding someone to pretend to be my girlfriend. He immediately recommended his childhood friend, Hannah, saying she would be happy to help. I had met Hannah a few times but wasn't very familiar with her. After hesitating, I called her and briefly explained my situation with Nami. Hannah readily agreed and came to see me after work. We went back together. And sure enough, Nami was standing at my doorstep again. But this time she wasn't holding anything. She stared at me and pointed at Hannah. Who is this woman? I held Hannah's hand. This is my girlfriend. Nami angrily said. Impossible. You are mine. Before I could speak, Hannah chimed in. Ryu divorced you. What makes you think it's impossible? Nami narrowed her eyes. Don't think I don't know you're just trying to provoke me by finding someone. You. Before she could finish, I turned and pretended to kiss Hannah. Not actually touching her face. Nami. We are divorced. Whether I date someone or get married again is my business. Not yours. Nami's expression was out of control. She glanced at Hannah's clothes. You want to be with this poor woman? I glared at her angrily. Don't insult my girlfriend. Nami looked at me with a tight expression as if she wanted to bore a hole into me, then turned and walked away. I looked at Hannah, full of apology. I'm sorry for offending you just now. Don't take her words to heart. It's okay. I smiled. I'll treat you to dinner someday. Thank you. Hannah smiled and agreed. I thought after last night's incident, Nami wouldn't come to me again. But the next morning, as I was about to leave for work, someone covered my mouth from behind. Everything went black, and I passed out. When I woke up, I found myself lying on an unfamiliar bed. I immediately sat up. Nami walked to the bedside, smiling. Ryu, you're awake. I looked at her warily. Where is this? This is our home. Ryu, you won't have to squeeze into that rented room anymore. Whatever you want to eat, just tell the servants. She had someone drug me and brought me to her home. I was shaking with anger. Nami, I never agreed to reconcile with you. What you're doing is illegal. Ryu, are you still angry about me deceiving you before? I'm sorry. Okay. I just want you to let me go. No. Nami stared at me, 
You are my husband. We have to be together forever. I loudly retorted. We are divorced. Nami, you have no right to do this to me. Chapter 7. Nami forcefully grabbed my hand. We can get married again. Ryu, please don't leave me. I really know I was wrong. I looked at her, a chill rising from my feet, but I thought, I can't show weakness, or she'll just keep pushing, thinking she can control me. So, I forced myself to stay calm and yelled at her, Nami, are you crazy? I already told you I don't love you. Stop clinging to me so shamelessly. Nami completely ignored my words. I don't believe you. I know you still love me. I took a deep breath. Nami, if Yuki hadn't betrayed you, you'd probably be getting married by now. You wouldn't even think of me. I'm begging you. Let me go. Nami shook her head. It's not like that. I admit I had ulterior motives when I first approached you, but I really fell in love with you later. Yuki means nothing to me anymore. You don't have to worry about him. She took a bank card from a nearby drawer and shoved it into my hand. Ryu, I really love you. I'll give you all my money. I pulled my hand back, and the card fell to the ground. I don't want it. Nami's face suddenly turned ugly, and she slapped me hard, yelling, Ryu, stop pretending you love money the most. The next second, she became flustered and leaned towards me. I'm sorry, Ryu. Does it hurt? I didn't mean it. She grabbed my hand and put it on her face. Hit me back. Go ahead. Hit me. I thought she was truly crazy, and my body instinctively shrank back. Nami, what do you really want? I want you to love me. Stop dreaming, Nami. We're over. Nami cupped my face trying to kiss me, I tried to dodge but couldn't, gritting my teeth, Nami, have some self-respect, Nami's actions paused for a moment, after a long while, she said, Ryu, I'll give you time, I believe we can go back to how we were, I closed my eyes, leave me alone, I need some time to think, Nami let go of me, okay, Ryu, I'll listen to you, once she left, my tense nerves relaxed, I needed to stay calm and find a way to escape, to make Nami let her guard down, I pretended to comply, eating and sleeping as usual. On the fourth night, Nami opened the door and entered, only to find the room empty. Ryu, I was standing behind her and shoved her hard. Nami fell to the ground, and I took the opportunity to run out of the villa. I didn't know the way, so I just ran as fast as I could, trying to get as far away from Nami as possible. Suddenly, I bumped into someone. I looked up and was thrilled to see, Ken. It's me. Since I went missing, Ken and Hannah had been searching for me. They suspected Nami had taken me so they stayed near her villa. Just as Ken and I were about to leave, I heard hurried footsteps behind us. Nami, with several bodyguards, had caught up. She stared at me with burning eyes. Ryu, how dare you deceive me? Did you never plan to come back to me? I looked at her coldly. Nami, do you think you're the only one allowed to deceive others? Nami gritted her teeth. I've been trying to make it up to you, bringing you to live with me, giving you the best life. Isn't that enough? Chapter 8. I found her utterly ridiculous. Did she think money could solve everything? What I always wanted was never about those things. But she would never understand. Nami, do you know why I can't forgive you? Because I'm just an ordinary person who wants a peaceful and stable life. I once considered you my everything, wanting to give you the best. But you trampled on me cruelly. I had nightmares for days. And you were in every one of them. You are my worst nightmare. Nami shivered and stepped back two steps. Ken and I left. And Nami didn't follow. She just stood there. After that. Ken and Hannah often came to see me. Hannah cared for me like a friend. I discovered her personality was really great, open and straightforward. One night, we went out for a walk. Hannah suddenly said to me, Ryu, I've liked you for a long time. Can you give me a chance to be your girlfriend? I was surprised. Sorry, Hannah. I don't want to be in a relationship right now. Thank you for liking me. Hannah looked at me. It's okay. I know Nami affected you a lot. I'll wait for you to recover. I'll also prove to you that it's not a temporary impulse. I really like you. Honestly, facing Hannah's sincere confession, I couldn't say I wasn't moved. But after my experience with Nami, I didn't dare to get involved in a relationship easily. Soon after, I moved to another city. Nami didn't come looking for me again. My life returned to peace. Three years later, with my savings, I opened a bakery. As a child, I never had enough to eat. And seeing other kids eating bread made me envious. I always wanted to have a bakery. I didn't expect my first customer to be Hannah. I asked in surprise, what are you doing here? Hannah smiled. Weren't you hiring staff, boss? I came for the job interview. I smiled too. Hannah stayed to help in my shop. Gradually, we naturally got together. I learned she had liked me since the first time she saw me but never dared to express it. When Ken asked her to help, she was thrilled because she finally had the chance to meet me. The bakery business was good. And soon it started making a profit. I had no pressure and lived happily every day. My relationship with Hannah was stable. Her love for me wasn't explosive, but it was steady and enduring. Later, Ken visited me, and during our chat, 
He mentioned Nami. I learned that two years ago, she had a car accident and almost died. Her legs were the most severely injured and had to be amputated. She became disabled. Moreover, her family's business inexplicably began to decline and was no longer prosperous. Hearing the news about Nami, I felt nothing, as if I had never known her. Maybe because I had long let go. Her fate had nothing to do with me anymore. After Ken left, I sat in a chair for a long time. Hannah came over and held my hand. What are you thinking about? I took out a ring. Hannah, will you marry me? Hannah looked at the ring in my hand and immediately covered her mouth, crying. She had waited a long time for this day. She nodded and said, yes, I will. I hugged her happily. I believe true love can withstand the test of time, which is why Hannah and I, after all our twists and turns, ended up together.